today, we're once again talking through the topic of breaking is gambling and Fanatics maybe not doing enough to protect its customers. Or more specifically, maybe Fanatics is blurring the lines between what is acceptable and what isn't. And that's creating some confusion in this space. And it's something that I touched on in some of my most recent videos. So you guys, the regulars will know that this was coming. I want to specifically talk to some things that happened out at Fanatics Fest that I think go hand in hand with the things we've talked about recently when it comes to them sort of overseeing breaking and, and blurring the lines between card collecting and gambling. And I want to hear what you guys have to say down below, as I do always say. Now, if you're not sure what I'm talking about, a couple of times in the last week, in particular, this video over here from eight days ago, and then I briefly mentioned that in these two videos over here, some things have happened from Fanatics in recent months that has left me a little bit concerned, specifically with the whole breaking is gambling. And what I specifically talked to in this instance was the lines being blurred between Fanatics being somebody selling cards and also Fanatics being somebody that offers a sports book service. And that was highlighted, like I said, in this video where there was an event for Tops where they invited people from a card collecting perspective. And one of the things that were given to people in a goodie bag was a $250 bonus bet with Fanatics Live. And one of the things I talked to in that video was the, the blurring of the lines and how it seemed to muddy the waters because uh, I was a bit concerned about what hat is Fanatics wearing when they're talking to us as card collectors. Are they sort of doing this sort of stuff when it comes to selling us cards under the proviso of them getting us hooked on gambling? And are they ultimately trying to transition all these card collectors into being, you know, gamblers on their sports book? And I talked through, you know, how that might be a bit concerning down the line if, if all of a sudden, you know, Fanatics turned around and started offering exclusive parallels to their sports book customers. And the way they would be given to people is if you, you gambled with them as a customer and you had a chance to get one of these exclusive parallels. And what they then would, would go on to do is maybe make those exclusive parallels be very short prints. So they're the ones that the, the hobby, you know, wants to value. So then all of a sudden you're going to have more people flock to the sports book component and start gambling in order to get a chance to get those cards because they're going to sell for more. Now, there's no hint of that happening, but that's what I was sort of alluding to in that video about it being a slippery slope when these lines get blurred and we don't really know which hat fanatics and tops are wearing when they're servicing us as customers. Are they being transparent? Are they being ethical when they're servicing us as card collectors, right? If they're wearing a hat that's saying, we're going to sell you a hobby box, but are they, you know, a wolf in sheep's clothing and ultimately trying to get us hooked onto something else? That's where you know, the confusion starts and why I think things need to be kept at arm's length and why certain things should not be overlapping. And I don't think, you know, a bonus bet being included at a sports card event should be the case. And some people will disagree, but that's where my mind goes. And what I also talked through in that video was that this was not the first time we sort of saw that happening. One of the other things that Tops were doing at their rip nights, which is these events they hold at local card stores around the country and around North America, because I think there's some in Canada too, was that in the, the the goodie bags they were giving to kids along with free packs, there was also, you know, $25, you know, credit to go ahead and use Fanatics Live, i.e. to go ahead and enter a break, which is something that I think is also concerning and, and something that I called out at the time is, you know, not maybe being the most appropriate, given that you've got this whole breaking component that people, you know, nine times out of 10 will say it's gambling and people that don't know sports cards or what breaking is will probably tell you the same thing. So the fact that you're handing out these credits to kids makes you start questioning things because then it comes down to, well, are you tops? doing that because you're trying to set the seed for when they get a bit older to now start giving them sports book, you know, coupon codes and the like. And that's where my mind goes, right? It's a very slippery slope. And and again, I could be off my chops when I say that. I could be off base. But when you see all these little things happen, you start to need, or well, you need to start assessing whether or not there is a consistent theme there, like I said. And the fact that you've got them handing out these, you know, coupon codes to kids, handing out sports betting things to the adults, it's like, well, what's your ultimate agenda here? Maybe it's A-OK, -okay, but maybe it's not. And if it's not, what measures are you putting in place to sort of protect customers from themselves and also making sure that you're not going to have any overlap or any, you know, ethical dilemmas popping up. And again, I could be rambling when I say that sort of stuff, but this sort of theory of mine maybe went to a little bit higher level in the last week or so when Fanatics Fest popped off because you had Ziggy No, aka The Card Hunter, put out a video. I did see these from others as well, but Ziggy, you know, covered it with a video specifically. We're on the main stage in the Hobby Hall, the Tops Hobby Hall, as you can see on screen. Fanatics allowed filth bomb breaks to come in and essentially show breaking one of one and the fundamentals of breaking. Now, this in of itself, I think it's pretty interesting. It's good to get this kind of insight, I think, for the hobby, just to understand maybe the background information or some of the tips these guys were sharing about how to go ahead and break cards. What was sort of interesting here is they had kids come up on stage and participate as well. And, you know, that's always left me a little bit uneasy. Yes, I understand kids want to be in this space because breaking is obviously fun. It'd be cool to do that as a career, if I'm being perfectly honest. And in this day and age, we've got kids wanting to be streamers and play video games for a living, all that kind of crap. It makes sense while this is appealing to them. 
my concern sort of comes from putting this hand in hand with the other things I touched on today. It's like, well, again, is this another method for, for these kinds of people to get kids involved, to get them hooked, and then to, to have them as sports book customers down the line? That might be a stretch. But my whole thought process on stuff like this is, well, you know, we as fanatics, we as tops, we as the guys running fanatics live want to make sure that, you know, we're above board and we don't want to be seen as unethical. And we want to make sure that breaking is here to stay. We want to make sure that there is a clear line in the sand on what is okay and what isn't. And in my opinion, kids should not be allowed to use Fanatics Live. If you're under 18, you should not be allowed to use Fanatics Live because of the whole gambling component. Maybe there's things you can buy singles off there, but the whole breaking piece needs to be regulated for, for the reasons I've touched on in the past. It's such a slippery slope. People will defend it, but you know what, guys? There's proof in the pudding with how dangerous this can be for some people in terms of addiction and all that kind of stuff. So I'm happy to die on that hill. But with that in mind, like I said, you know, I'd like to see Fanatics draw that line in the sand and say, well, we're not, we're not going to let kids buy Fanatics Live. If they want to go ahead and, and buy into breaks on that platform, that's it. We, we can control it as much as we can. But one thing we can do better at is not give them $25 coupon codes at trade nights, which are events specifically designed for kids to trade cards. You know, we're going to be better than that. We're not going to go ahead and give those coupon codes. When it comes to Fanatics Fest once again, and we want to do breaking one of one, it's cool. We want to show people how to break. You know what? We're going to tell the breaker, you know what? You can't get any kids involved on stage for this reason, right? This is the stance we want to be taking as a company for X, Y, Z reasons. But we're not, you know, currently seeing that. And, you know, I don't think there's a, a wider theory here or conspiracy theory, I should say, around them doing this intentionally because they want to convert every card customer to a gambler. But when you see the things that I've just mentioned in this video and in previous videos, you can at least understand why I'm asking the question. And it's just a slippery slope. I've said that multiple times in this video. I said that multiple times in the last video. It's just one of those ones that I'd like to see better accountability from them as a business and, and better you know, morals around the whole process. You know, stop giving out Fanatics Fest, uh, Fanatics Live, I should say, discount codes to kids at trade nights. Like that just seems dumb. Like I can understand you can use those to buy, you know, singles and all that sort of stuff and packs, but it's just a slippery slope. Have it at arm's length, take it appropriately and, and don't let people ask you these questions. Because then again, when you go to events for cards specifically and you're giving people, you know, sports book cards, or codes, it's seen as the same thing in my opinion. It's just one of those things where it's like, well, what hat are you wearing when you're talking to us? Are you talking to me as tops? Are you talking to me as Fanatics Live? Or are you talking to me as you know the Fanatic Sports Book? Or are you talking to me as all three of those at the same time? And for you guys that might not understand why that's a bad thing, think of it also through the lens of you know a sports card content creator that is telling you to go ahead and use XYZ Grader, but you don't know they're sponsored, but secretly they are sponsored in the background. It's like, well, you knowing that and not knowing that beforehand is going to help you make your decision a lot better, right? Because if you've got somebody that you follow and you trust and they say to go ahead and do this and then you find out later on that they are sponsored, it's like, well, did they say that just because they were sponsored? And this is sort of a little bit similar in that vein. Whilst we do know Fanatics is one company, you know, which hat are you wearing when you're talking to me? Is it Tops? Is it Fanatics Live? Or is it your sports book? That's where things get a bit concerning and why I think we need more transparency and better standards with Fanatics as a business. So you know, I went on a rant on this one. Apologies, I had to cut the video quite a lot. I'm pretty sick. I do have influenza, as I did mention in my last video. It's rocked me pretty hard, actually. So I just try to record this while I felt, you know, a little bit better. Hopefully it made sense. If it didn't, let me know your thoughts down below. I'm not happy. Well, I'm always happy, I should say, to have egg on my face. So if I said something wrong, say it down below. And um, I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.